about time. Yeah, yeah. What is all this, anyway? Get that ice bucket over there. This is insurance. Well, whatever it is, just hurry up, will you? I can't rush a pipe bomb, Chris. Pipe bomb? You say pipe bomb? What are you, out of your mind? We're supposed to meet Bobby to get Burgess back alive, not blow us all the kingdom come. Bobby says he wants to exchange me for Ellen. That's a lie, Chris. He's not gonna let any witnesses get out of there alive. How does a medical doctor know how to make a pipe bomb? Bobby taught me. What else did your big brother teach you? How to stay alive. No offense, Matt. But with you throwing bombs around, I'd be surprised if any of us get out of there in one piece. You just do exactly what I say. And I mean exactly. When it starts getting hairy, and it will, you just keep your head down, Chris. You get Ellen and get out. What about you? Just get out, Chris. Don't look back, no matter what happens. Who is it? It's Grace. All right, what have you got? The rendezvous is set for Consolidated Foods Warehouse. Okay, I know where that is. No, 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 that doesn't sound right. What are you talking about? The, the, the man who took Ellen said, said, said Wharfside on the phone. Are you sure? Why didn't you say something about this? I just remembered, and I was scared. Matt said Consolidated Foods. Would he lie to protect you? He absolutely would. Okay, I know the other place. One of my clients was a co-owner. I know it well enough to get in there. And to help Matt. I'm going with you. No. You're not coming with me. No, no, listen to him, Grace. These people are serious. And we can't do anything to increase the danger to Ellen. Look, I haven't got time to argue. If you don't hear from me in an hour, call the cops. Don't let him hurt my baby. I won't, I promise. <laughs> I'm going with him whether he likes it or not. <laughs> Scott? You can downplay it all you want, but what you showed me in the lab looks like you're really onto something. Finding the drug, I mean, that, that was a fluke. Oh, like Dr. Fleming discovering penicillin? Yeah, maybe. Maybe nothing. Your work is brilliant. No matter how hard I try, leftovers in my fridge at the dorm never turn into miracles of modern science. <laughs> It's probably because you don't let them sit around long enough. <laughs> no, I, I mean it. You've, you've impressed me. So is that hard to do, or? Well, it's easier for some than others. I think this caffeine junkie is about to pay the price. I'll be right back. Tell me about your new friend, Chloe. That's her name. Chloe. Is she pretty? Oh, come on, Eve. No, you come on. Give me the scoop, man. Okay. Uh, we just met. Mm-hmm. So there isn't much to tell. <laughs> come on, and... Extremely beautiful. Aha! Now we're getting somewhere. I am going to stay right here. I'm not moving until she gets back. To spy. Jake. It's hardly spying if I'm sitting right in front of you. Come on, I want to meet her. I can't just have you going out with anyone, you know. 
Aren't Karen and Joe waiting in the lab? So? So you're gonna let them starve while you sit here and put your nose in my business? Well, we all have to make sacrifices. Besides, they can go hungry for another ten minutes. As long as they know I'm coming back with the scoop on your mystery date. Oh, Eve. Too bad, huh? Gotta go. A narrow escape, my friend. But I will meet her. And remember, I'll be watching you. <laughs> So, where were we? We were just about to have another cup of coffee. What? What's going on? Guess what? I went home to check on Fred. You're not gonna believe this. I can't believe this. He's fully recovered. No way! Yes. This is the guy that almost didn't make it? Yes! This is it, Joe. Accelerated nerve regeneration. Karen, this isn't supposed to be possible. I tell that to the parents. I know this is only one case. I know that. But think about this. If our research keeps up what this could do, how many people this could help? Nobody's going to get the same care as this ferret, though. I mean, you're giving this guy the high life. <laughs> I think doctors should take really good care of their patients. Mm -hmm. Oh. Right, right. Uh, a new cage, a uh, ferret litter box, a floor-to-ceiling ferret playhouse. And ferret tunnels. You know, with all the money that you spent on this guy, you could have funded the whole research project yourself. I think somebody mentioned funding. Before you go counting your beans, let me remind you, I'm still waiting for you to replicate the experiment you did on the ferret that was destroyed. We're working on it, sir. Well, do it quick. And do it right this time. And I want to see all your research. The guy is unbelievable. He can smell money a mile away. That's the only reason he's riding us on this path. He's gonna keep us wedged under his thumb. I don't trust him one bit. It's too dark. I told him to come alone. Yeah, well, I didn't want to miss all the fun. Then you're just in time. Come in. Not until we get some lights. Are we through playing games yet? Let's get this over with. Where's Dr. Burgess? Why don't you show me what I came here to see? Ellen comes out first. You all right? So far. She's fine. Come on out, Ironside. Show me your hands. Happy? Ellen, you okay? You didn't tell me you had such a charming family. Everything's gonna be fine. Ironside? <laughs> You're dating yourself. I have a clear line on all targets. Waiting for your signal. Sure, I can't see you home. I know you have to go save the world. <laughs> save the world, is that what I do? You know, I know interns barely have a life, but do you think you can make time for dinner some night? Are you asking me out? No, I I just meant if you were gonna eat someplace, you know, maybe I can meet you there. You How know, about but... tomorrow night? Really? Unless you have some other plans. No. No, tomorrow night's great. I should probably get going. Yeah, me, me too. Yeah. So, tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was thinking. About? 
doing this. Can I, um, pick the place for dinner? Sure. Great. I'll leave you a message, okay? Need you are a lifesaver. <laughs> Thank you so much for dinner. Listen, talk is cheap. You guys just remember me when you hit it big with this new drug here. How's it look? Well, I'm just plugging in an estimate of fees on each dose and how many hospitals will be likely to use it. You're kidding. No. If this drug works, it is going to be a miracle for the people that it helps. Not to mention, it will create a miracle bank account for the original researchers. So we'll be making miracles and great money. It's not a bad combination. Well, let's count those chickens when we finish the research, okay? Hey, Joe, have you seen my report log? I wrote some last results and it's on the table. Oh, I can't find it anywhere. Wexler, you have been holding out on me, although the work you've done thus far is quite good. Sir, that book is filled with personal observations and preliminary reports. It's not ready for public consumption yet. I'm not the public. I'm your research supervisor and I found it very enlightening. Injecting the solution at the site of the injury was a good call. It increased the concentrations of the growth factors you've been using. You had no right to take that book without our consent. That's practically a personal journal. Wexler, you're an intern doing research for this hospital under my supervision. Unfortunately. I'm sorry, Dr. Lambert. Did you say anything? No, not a thing. Good. Apparently, I need to remind you folks here that the hospital owns all research done on the premises in any form, including your notes. And I will expect a regular report, including personal observations. Those are the rules, Wexler. If you can't handle it, I'd be glad to find somebody to turn the project over to. Problem? No. Problem. Good. You have no choice. You ready to bargain? I don't see you holding any cards, bro. Well, you're the one who taught me to always come prepared. We never made it through Boy Scouts, but I took that motto to heart. You can't do anything from that chair I put you in. You didn't think I'd come in here without a backup plan, did you, Bobby? Come on over here, Eric. Let's do it. So these nice people can go home. This is supposed to be a trade. Not a massacre. And my name is Matt. Don't move, baby. Let's do it. I've actually been praying for this day to come. I'm ready whenever you are. Come on. That's close enough. Hey, the hands. Watch the hands! <gasps> I'm wired deep enough to take out this entire building. Oh, my God, Matt, don't! My brother is not planning on letting you out of here alive, Ellen. This is the only way. Nice move. You taught me well. I'm hurt. You don't trust me? I'm a man of my word. Your friends will live. Well, then give your word to whoever has us in their sights to back off. Don't you think for a minute that I'm not going to kill you myself. Let's just keep this between you and me, Bob. Tell whoever came with you to take a hike. We are all going to die. Right here.
despite the court order, Lark puts a do not disturb sign on the door and sneaks away. She is obviously out of control. The only thing obvious here is that she knew she wanted to get caught. So what was it, a cry for help? Why else would she pull a stunt like this unless she wanted attention? Well, of course, she wants attention. I'm not arguing that. But wants and needs are two separate things. And what she needs is to be placed in an environment where she can learn discipline and responsibility. She needs to go back to the juvenile center. I won't send her back. I will not come down on her so hard that we emotionally lose her for good. Shutting down Lark's emotions is exactly what you should be doing. She doesn't function on anything but emotion. She needs to go where she can learn another way to live. Where have you been? I went for a walk. I'm sorry. That's not good enough. You broke the rules. Again. Julie. You're grounded. Come on, Frank. I, I did my homework. I did my volunteer work at the hospital. I just needed to get some fresh air. You go to school, you go to community service, you come home, nothing else. Leave it to Devlin to steal those reports. They are hospital property. Now, this guy wants all the credit himself. Yeah. You know what, guys, I've had enough wind kick out of me for one night. I'm going home. Wait, 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 wait a second. Devlin hasn't seen these yet, has he? No, but he'll want to. No, he said he wanted regular reports, not all the reports. You're splitting hairs, Joe, and I think I like it. Joe, are you saying you want to keep these reports from Devlin? No, no, not exactly. Uh, yes and no. Are you up for crunching a few more numbers? All I'm saying is we shouldn't encourage Devlin with our findings yet. Hand him over. So how far up do you want these results to be? I don't know, um, three to four percent. Six to eight. I mean, just to be safe. Well, that'll make things interesting. Devlin will think that he's getting close, but no cigar. And the whole time, we'll keep the journals to ourselves. This isn't exactly ethical. Listen, what's not ethical is Devlin trying to elbow you out of your own project. Well, this could get us kicked out of the whole program. Then just have to be careful. I don't need you offering your two cents when it comes to me and Frank. You and Frank, you're not a couple. You're his foster child. And as long as you're living in my apartment, I'll give you my opinion whenever I feel like it. You're trying to turn Frank against me. If Frank is disappointed in you, you accomplish that all by yourself. I should have seen it before. You're jealous because Frank wants to take care of me. Frank is protective of you the way he would be protective of any lost child. I am not a baby. That's exactly what you are. Well, an overgrown baby who doesn't know how to be a responsible person. And I suppose you think you're going to teach me? Oh, at this point, I'm not interested in teaching you how to tie your shoe. You know what? You stay out of my way. And I will stay out of yours. I don't make bargains with children. Now, why don't you be a good girl and go to bed? Tiny tykes need their rest. Very careful, buddy. You're in the crosshairs right now. Call him off. You're not gonna blow us up. You don't have the guts. Please don't test him. Shut up! You're gonna die tonight, Matt. Don't take your friends with you. You're not a killer. You never were. You're willing to bet on that? You know, when I was a kid, I used to look up to you, Bobby. But you never really knew me. Don't make that mistake again. You're bluffing. If I am gonna die, I want my friends to be safe. See, I'm just gonna try to keep this simple. Nothing crazy, nothing heroic. How are your friends gonna be safe with you strapped to take out the whole building? I don't think you're gonna do it. You care too much. That was always your problem. Come on. Come on. Bobby, nine o'clock. Get down, Ellen! <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh.
This is Bill Ritter. Sunday, they have a reputation for being one of the most boring parts of the Academy Awards, but even behind the scenes, the accountants who tabulate the votes find a moment of glamour on GMA Sunday. Will Brooks' worst fears about Edmund come true? Find out why everybody's watching All My Children today.